Genesis. <coughs> Before we get started, I want to introduce this fellow here and his wife. Uh, the Lord led me to him about three weeks ago, I guess, to Brother Satan here. Down at Fisk, Missouri. I was going to Dexter, and God said, Don't go to Dexter, go to Fisk. And he told me where to turn in at. And I kind of attended him when I did it. <laughs> <laughs> we both kind of got upset with each other there for 15 minutes. <laughs> and then it turned into a good friendship. Can I, can I add to that? And yeah. <laughs> You can stand if you want. I think that's emotional. I've been kind of praying for somebody to help me with some patience. Yeah. And my wife, was you there that day? Well, it was another day that somebody had turned in and she's like, just breathe. Uh, I treat people in my business like trespassers for some reason. It's an OCD thing. And he was laying around in the building. It's like, he's going to hit something. <laughs> anyway, we come in and, and we sit down here and not to speak out of the term, but we kind of finish each other's thoughts. And yeah, that's what we did. So I was so proud to meet him. And, yeah. and that's why I'm coming up here to fellowship. The devil's trying to make a bad thing. He yeah. can take it and turn it around because we miss I had very good sensations and uh, we discussed that. It seemed like I had failed.
offering for the building fund. And right. then Brother Clifford, if you don't mind, if you would get your hand up there and take it around. Little after the blessing. God, we come before the throne of grace tonight. Mm. Lord, we're thankful for this another opportunity that we've got to gather together in this place in your presence, Lord, and to feel the spirit the way that we feel it here and know that you're with us, God. We just lift up your name and we glorify you tonight. We ask Lord, that you just let the Holy Spirit come into this place. And Lord, we want you to be the leader of what goes on here. God, we don't want to lead ourselves, but we want to be you and help us to be free in the Spirit tonight, to be obedient to you. Ask you to bless this offering as we take it tonight. And let it go, Lord, for the need that there are in this church. Mm -hmm. And we thank you and we pray that you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I am blessed.
talking about other countries and how spoiled and how unappreciative we are in America. And I don't think we give God near enough praise. I don't think we thank him enough. And I'm speaking, I say we, but I'm speaking of myself. I love the Lord with all my heart. And I praise him and I thank him, but it's still not enough for everything he's done for me. But I saw people that were hungry for the word of God. And I saw people who were willing to walk down mountains. And I'm not talking about hills like we see around here. I'm talking mountains for hours to get to a church service. I saw them walk from the valley up a mountain to get to a church service. We can't even get people to come in the doors. We are spoiled in America. And we're very, very unthankful to God. I don't want to be... God said, if we don't praise him, the rocks will praise him. I don't want a rock to take my place. Mm -hmm. So we have so much, so much to be thankful for here. I think I can speak for everybody here. We've all been blessed abundantly, and we have so much to thank him for. Mm -hmm.
tell you what, if you knew what he brought me out of, woo, I got so much to praise him for. Thank you, Jesus. Someone spoke that if you be lifted up, you will draw all men unto you. That's what we want to do tonight. We want to lift you up and we want to thank you. Lord, and we ask that you go on with us through the rest of the song service, through the, through the word, Lord. We pray that the words that you have us to hear, the things that we need to hear, Lord, that you would speak it into the ear of the speaker tonight that our ears would be open to receive it Lord and it would go deep in our hearts and it would sprout up and grow and it would accomplish what you sent it to accomplish we know you're not done working on us we know Lord that you said you would you had begun a good work in us and you would perform it until the day of Jesus Christ 
And he said that faith comes by hearing, Lord. So help us to hear what's said tonight. Holy Spirit, touch through each one of us here tonight. Touch through us. Love through us and heal through us. Does anybody here have any needs? Meet that need tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you. When they brought this song up, this is the song I taught my children, my church children, how to pray. When they came to the altar, we would pray. So anybody that wants to come to the altar and pray and thank the Lord for saving their soul, or just listen to the song because this is a prayer song. And it, this is a prayer of faith right here. Amen. You know, people think that the only time you can come to the altar, a lot of people think the only time you can come to the altar is when you get saved. But that's not true. No. That's not true. You can come to this altar anytime just to communicate with the Lord. To show we're supposed to we're supposed to not be ashamed of Jesus. That's one way to show you're not ashamed. Amen. Thank you. With all the things that's going on on around in the world, there's plenty to pray about. Thank
of the world, Jesus is glad you're glad. Tonight, I want to preach from the book of Acts. It just, it's time for us to get started up in the Lord. And let go and let God have his way. The thing that happened when the day of Pentecost fully come, first of all, I want to get into the new covenant before I get into this. The, the covenant that Jesus came here for us to be part of. I mean, it's different now than it ever has been before. Since Jesus came to this world and he brought this New Testament. I'm talking about what happened. He said, while I'm here with you, I'm the light of the world. Right. He said, but there's going to be a day when I'm going to leave you. But he said, when I leave you, he said, you're not going to be left comfortless, right. but you're going to be endued with power from on high. And that is what happened on the day of Pentecost. I myself, I've not been with Brother Sean long enough telling the experiences that I've had with God. But Jesus came to visit me two years after my wife died at midnight, two weeks before Christmas, while I was sitting there, he was telling me, you need to tell about that again tonight. In 2015, Jesus came. I was just going to bed, and he walked through my front door. It was locked. And he walked through that door, came into my bedroom, stood there and laid his hand on my side. I'm talking about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He came in, laid his hand on my side, and stood there and ministered to me without saying a word with his hand on my side. He ministered to me what I needed. I mean, I, I was heartbroken. I, I was didn't want to go on. My wife had passed away and we got married, she was 15 and I was 20. And we'd lived a lifetime, 55 years together. Here I am, 83 years old today. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying my birthday was today, but I, I'm saying today that I'm 83 years old. How did I ever get to this place? Been 83 years old, time, goes by so fast but she's been gone almost eight and a half years now and I didn't think I could make it without her but I found out after she passed away I found out that I'm a person that God cares for and that he has got his hand on me it, it wasn't her that was the uh, the thing that was keeping us lined up with God. I mean, it's that direct connection that you've got between you and the one sitting on the right hand of the Father, and Jesus Christ, he's sitting there and making intercession for you. Brother Sean, he's sitting there and making intercession for you. If you're not perfect, that's what he's for. He's there to and take you before the Father and say, this is one of my children here. And actually, you know, that we're not just his children, but we're the bride of Christ. That, that's what we were studying this morning, that we're the bride of Christ. And one of these days, there's going to be a, a table spread uh, where the saints of God are going to be fed. And we're going to... Uh, and be sitting there someplace along that line of tables and, uh, and Jesus is going to walk by 
and he's going to say, I knew you when you was down there. I seen you, and I knew what you was doing. And uh, I just want to pat you on the back and say how glad I am that you stayed faithful unto the end. The Bible says the ones that stay faithful to the end, the same shall be saved. Oh, uh, I found out that uh, in this life that we can really be blessed. I was on a lot more, uh, uh, I think it's one day this last week, and God said, you know what I told Adam and Eve? Go forth and multiply. I got to thinking about that, how that God wants us to uh, prosper in this life. He don't want us to barely make it. He wants us to prosper uh, because if we prosper, uh, we can lift him up and glorify him uh, by the uh, money or uh, the tithe, the offerings, uh, by helping the poor and the needy. Uh, uh, there's very much to do, uh, but it's just finding the ones that are willing to let go and let God have his way. Uh, the last day I was down there talking to Brother Sean, he got out three guitars and he can play and he can sing. I told him that if he'd come up there, we'd have him to uh, sing us a special. And if he would come up here enough, we'd get him in the uh, praise team over here. Can you play drums? <laughs> <laughs> That'd probably be all we need. <laughs> I'm, I'll tell you one thing. We'll find a place in this church for you. I know that's a, a pretty long drive, but the morning I was going down there when the Lord was leading me to come and meet you, that drive seemed like it was about 15 miles, something like that. When I left here, I knew that God had a special reason for me to uh, leave and I, I was heading for Dexter that day to see if I could find the truck and I went to his lot I looked on every windshield and it said not for sale <laughs> and I said he said what, what are you looking for and I said I'm looking for a truck but there's nothing for sale <laughs> He said, what makes you think that? I said, says it on the windshield. He said, well, that for the reason. I said, uh, I said, well, not all of them say that. Yeah. <laughs> he, he said, the reason that's on there, I'm a collector. <laughs> I wore them. But anyway, what God can't do, right. if you listen to him. Right. I, I've been led about two or three different times this year to people that I didn't have any idea that uh, God was leading me there. Uh, I won't go into that because I got too much preach on tonight, but I believe that God, he, there's going to be something special that's going to take place in the United States of America. I believe that God is really getting ready to move if people just, if they're hungry and they want to get the blessing. This is a good time to get in line with God and let go and let him have his way. Uh, I want to start here in the second chapter and I don't know how much I'll preach from here probably not too much because I've got too many other things on my mind tonight and I, I believe that this service tonight is a special service as far as God is concerned. I believe that uh, he's got answers for you tonight. If you've got problems and every one of us have got problems that we need to solve, God is a problem solving God. I mean, it's in Him that we can find our answers. It's in Him, Brother Bobby, that we can find what we need. 
if you got problems tonight, God is the one yes. that can yes. solve them problems. Yes. When the day of Pentecost fully come, uh, uh, that day back 2,000 years, probably plus 2,000 years, uh, anyway, 2,000 years back when the day of Pentecost fully come, it came in like a rushing mighty wind. They heard and they saw the evidence of it. They saw the cloven tongues of fire uh, setting on the ones that received the Holy Ghost that night. And do you believe that uh, that was just for that day? I don't. I believe that the day of Pentecost is here. I'm not talking about uh, 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 some denominational uh, uh, type of people. I'm talking about God's chosen people that are, uh, are willing to get in and let go and let God have his way. If you're not ashamed of him, the Bible says he won't be ashamed of you. And if you let him and take you and use you. Uh, there's much work to be done, and the workers are so few. He said the harvest is great, that it's right, uh, but there wasn't any workers back then. Uh, we live in a worse time probably than it was back then as far as people resisting God. I mean, they're being murdered all over the world because of being Christian, because of saying that Jesus Christ is the way. Right. I'm going to tell you tonight, there is no other way besides Jesus Christ. Amen. And anybody that stands up and starts preaching that there is another way, this is the true word of God right Amen. here. And uh, there is no other book that even compares with the Holy Bible right. No other book besides this book will do what this book, this is the inspired. I'm not saying that God took his hand and wrote it, but it's the inspired word of God through men writing down what God gave them uh, to write. This is the inspired word of God. And that night that uh, Jesus came to me, he said that it was that this is the word of God, that man have tried to change it, but it cannot be changed. And that that's exactly the way it is. I, I mean, I'm either going to believe the Bible or I'm not going to believe anything because as far as I'm concerned, anything that's made out of wood or stone or anything like that, it does not have any life in it. Uh, but Jesus said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Amen. And it's in him uh, that uh, uh, we can feel that we've got something. That I'm talking about something uh, supernatural tonight. I'm not talking about the nature of man. I'm talking about the supernatural Amen. powers of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm not talking about anything fanatical. I'm talking about uh, getting born again, uh, yeah. uh, being baptized, and being filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And uh, I, I believe in speaking in tongues. I believe uh, that there's a heavenly language that uh, uh, you get when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I've done it myself. And I speak in other tongues. And I was sitting over there speaking in tongues and mostly telling the Lord how I love him. Uh, that's what I was uh, uh, speaking to him uh, about, how I love you, Jesus. Oh, for all that you've done for me on the cross of Calvary, you took me out of uh, the mire, uh, pit of clay, and you raised me up and uh, uh, set my feet up on the solid rock. And that solid rock is Jesus Christ tonight. He set my feet up on that solid rock. And I don't have to wonder and worry when I go to bed at night. I go to bed and I feel at ease because of, uh, you know what? The presence of Jesus is in my uh, bedroom. He's there to comfort me 
all I believe in the, of the miracles of God taking place today. And like Peter and John, when they uh, walked in the temple there, and the lame man that was sitting there, he had been, the, he was crippled from the uh, birth. He had been crippled, and he slept there bagging alms. And the, uh, Peter and John, they walked in there, and they turned around, and they said, Fast your eyes upon us. And they said, uh, Silver and gold have we none, uh, but such as we have. Uh, we give unto thee. And they said, In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Yes. And he went in the temple, uh, following them, uh, praising God, uh, probably leaping and praising God. I believe that we're still living in that same power because God said, I change not. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. I believe that what took place that, uh, back when Jesus walked the face of this earth, I believe that it can still be done today. Amen. I keep up on some uh, evangelists, some preachers that have really got the gifts of God working in them. I believe that we've got the gifts of God working right here in this place. Uh, but uh, this Angus Buck in, in South Africa, he raised a woman from the dead that had been lightning struck. One of uh, someone that uh, was in his staff of employees, I believe. Anyway, she'd been lightning struck, and there was uh, some people come to him and said, this woman is dead, said, you need to go and pray for her. What happened when the, the boy fell out of the window there when Paul preached to mid until midnight? He raised him from the dead and went back preaching until the sun came up the next morning. What would this church think if we preached, had preaching all night and uh, there was a need to go pray for somebody we come back and preach on to daylight. Would you go for that? <laughs> oh, how I'd like to see like it was down New Liberty back when I was uh, five or six years old. People standing outside, hungry for God. They would stand outside. You know why? I'm an antique, Brother Sean. I, I was born in 1938. I remember World War II. I had a brother with, that was in the Navy in World War II. My dad would ask the church to pray for my son. And they would earnestly get on their knees, or they would stand, and they'd pray. But not only my dad, almost every family there had someone in World War II. Oh, how great it is to be able to gather together like we have here tonight and to be able to uh, worship God in spirit and in truth and know that there's no one going to come through the door and stop it yet today. But there will be a day, I may not live long enough to see it, but there will be a day when the law when it'll all be stopped here in the United States, just like it is in Syria and a lot of other countries uh, around the world, Christian people are being murdered. And that's what the Bible says is going to take place in the last days. I believe that we're living in the end time. I believe that Jesus uh, is getting ready to come back after a church that is ready to meet him. A church, the Bible says this church is going to be without spot and blemish. Do you know how that's possible? It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. He blots out our ever sin that we ever committed. And it, if we sin now, we have to go to him and he goes to the Father and he begs for us 
He died on the cross of Calvary. I'm looking down at the ones that crucified him. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Right. Oh, we live in a time that, like Sister Jackie was saying, people are so spoiled. You know why? They're used to having their way. I mean, it's what I want in this day and time. What I want. Everybody thinks that except the ones that are sold out to Christ. They think, what do I want to do today? What do I, what kind of pleasure do I want today? The Bible says in this day there'll be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Right. And the that's exactly the way it is today. It says, and when the, I don't know, I may have been preaching a half hour already. I don't know. But I'm going to preach until I feel like the Holy Ghost says it's time to quit. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. I want to say this, and then I'll quit on this sudden. When Jesus came in that night, and he started preaching to me about faith, it sounded like a jet engine started up in my bedroom. It sounded like a rushing mighty wind. And I went out in the spirit, I was completely consumed. When I come to him, he was still preaching. He, and he was preaching in a heavenly language that I couldn't understand. But when, before he got done, he told me, he said, if you've got faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you can literally move that hill. There's a hill back, back in my place there. It don't belong to me, and if I had that much faith, the people that owned the place would probably truly get upset. <laughs> <laughs> but he said he was trying to tell me to pick my faith up yes. because I couldn't depend on what Margaret, my wife, done. I had to do what I can do. I found that out. I found out once I started depending on him. I thought I had always before that. But when I found out that I was, I could do, I could talk. I could preach. I could do all the things that I thought she was the head of before. I found out I could do all that stuff. You know why? Because Jesus the presence of the Holy Ghost was with me and in me. And Amen. I found out, well, I, I've been preaching for 38 years, but I found out once did I begin to really trust God, there wasn't hardly a stopping place. But when once you get up there and get started preaching, then you, you just keep them fed and fed from the, that direct connection that we got that goes to heaven. And that is through Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, going to our Heavenly Father. I'm, I'm the Trinity tonight. I, I believe in Trinity all the way. Right? Yeah. And, and it says here, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as the fire. And it said upon each of them, I know of cases in St. Louis, I lived in St. Louis many years. There was a great revival going in a church in our city, I believe it was. And they called, I mean, there was really a movement of God in that place. The neighbors around there seen far on the roof. And they called in the fire department and they couldn't find the flame any place. I mean, it was the glory of God that was in that place and on that roof. And 
all there's other cases that I will talk about but if you think that God is off somewhere and he's sweeping or uh, going on vacation or something like that uh, he's not we serve that same God the God of creation right. brother Sean sometimes I get off on the Hubble telescope and how far that they can see out there in space. 50 billion light years. Do you know how far that is? Long way. And that <laughs> goes any direction you look. 50 billion light years. Christian scientists say that creation is still taking place out there at the edge where they can see to. God, I mean, you can't go far enough that you can hide from God. Right. You can't go deep enough in there. You can't go anywhere because he's there. Right. Right. Amen. He's the God of all creation tonight. Oh, and I thank him. I thank him because he had a plan. Right. That I believe that uh, like Jeremiah, I believe it was, God said, I knew you for you was conceived in your mother's womb. Right. I believe that I've been with this church since 1956. That's where you was ever born, Brother Sean. But I've been with this church. I'm not saying Christian because I got saved when I was actually 45 years old and I dedicated my life to God. Got saved at this altar. I've been preaching 38 years and I've been here 14, I think, going on 15 years pastoring. But I found out that God is such a great God. And He's what I'm hungry for tonight. Amen. I want Him to think that a God like that looked ahead so far. I believe He had plans for me to finish up my life pastoring here at Rain Creek Worship Center. Uh, I've been here, they wanted me to start, uh, they wanted me to be a deacon back when I was in my teens and I said no, I'm not fit to be a deacon. I, God called me to preach when I was 17 years old and I ran from him until I was 45. My wife went around asking everybody to pray, pray, pray. She said, pray for him. He's called to preach and he's running from it. And Brother John Allen, he said, when he gets where he beats his head against the wall, then he'll give in. She said, no, he's done that a long time ago. <laughs> and I, I'd come to church for three or four months and I couldn't stand that God would be a deal with me. I, you, I called you to preach. You've got to be a start preaching. And I go home. I, I quit church. I think, what's the use? I'm not doing what God wants me to do. What's the use? The night I came up here and I surrendered. I said, here I am, God. Here I am. Send me. And the pastor said, well, he may send you to Texas. That there's no tell for it. He was saying, he asked Margaret, he said, are you ready to go? And I, the Lord called me into pastoring almost immediately. I thought I was going to be an evangelist. I thought I might even go to Africa or any place. I thought I might go west, east, north, north, south. <laughs> In some other place besides here. This is not the only church I've been in. I, I've been in other churches and filled in and pastored in my own basement for 17 years. But what I'm telling you, there is much to do. There's work on every hand. And God is looking for people that will do His will. They'll be a doer of the word, not just a hearer, but a doer of the word. 
So, I'm going to pose there, I guess, tonight. And uh, I've barely touched. I'm just getting down before I can start preaching now. <laughs> because uh, I'm getting into what happened there that night. The Holy Ghost came in. You, do you know it opened the door to come in for a reason so that the church can be led by the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Trinity I'm talking about. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. I mean, that is where we stand at tonight. We're in this uh, covenant that Jesus came down here with and he brought it, he established it. He established it on the old rugged cross. He established exactly what we've got that we're missing out on so much. I mean, there could be leaping, jumping, praising. We could see the people raised from the dead right here. We serve the same God that they served in South Africa. We sing, we serve the same God that Ron Webb or anyone else served in Poplar Bluff or Jim Baker out in Branson. We serve that same God. I mean, uh, you may not even like these preachers that I've named on. Named on. I don't know and I really don't care. <laughs> I'm just talking to you about what God can do tonight. I mean, he's looking for someone that says, here I am, Lord, send me. Uh, praise the Lord. Well, I will close there. And I hope you've got something out of this tonight. I'm telling you, I felt the Spirit of God. I kept saying, my friend said he might be here tonight. And just about starting time, he walked through the door. That, that, all that was so good. I, uh, meeting him down there, I told him, I said, I want you to be my friend. We were talking. And I said, I want you to be my friend. I felt a connection with him when I went down there. Why? Because God told me to go there. He didn't tell me that he was needing someone to talk to or anything. He didn't tell me he's got any kind of trouble. He said, go there. I went there and I found that Dakota <laughs> I parked it. I drove around the yard two or three times, but that's all I've, I've never tore into it to see what it needs and what can be done. But it's next on the list when I get the old lady to find dogs on the road again. Not to, not to be out of line, but everybody hears what he's saying, so with that old truck don't work out. <laughs> it, it will. It I, will. I'll make it work out. Well, we'll, we'll make it work out either. Yeah, yeah, good Lord came. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that God works like He does. I, I believe I've found a friend for life. Yeah, and uh, I plan on going and seeing him, and I want him to come up and visit me and come to church as often as we can. I'm talking about Sister, uh, what's your wife's name? Your name is Kelly. Johnson. Johnson, yeah. Johnson. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I'm really glad that I got to meet the two. Not the first time I met her, but uh, it was just a good, I mean, it, I went back the second day and spent the biggest part of the day there with him and went back picked up my truck and uh, with me and my son spent about two hours there that day and enjoyed every bit of it. Next time you come, bring your Les Paul, yeah. play us a, sing us a special, yeah. play with the praise team. Hey, they can come over Saturday night, we'll let them sing. We yeah, sing it Saturday yeah. night. <laughs> but, oh, that's right. We got to sing it uh, Saturday night. So come, you're in pressure. Come and 
<laughs> come to meet the parents and sing. Yeah, yeah. We, we, I know I'd enjoy it if everyone else will too. Yeah. Yeah. And we want to tell you that it's a privilege to have you with us tonight. Thank you. We really, I, I love, I've got love in my heart for people and that God put it there. And I, I love both of you with all my heart tonight. I'm, I'm just so thankful that God is the kind of God that will say, you go here because that's where I want you to go. If I had went to Dexter, I would have never met you. Probably. I probably wouldn't have stopped back by there. But I couldn't even see a sign that said how far it was to Dexter. Come back when I left there, it was plain. It was right there on the bridge, I think. And it says 21 miles, I believe, to Dexter. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, that's enough for me. Anyone got anything on your heart? Does anyone feel a need for prayer for us? Go. There's people I was going to ask church to pray for. Okay. But I don't want to interrupt anybody else. And do uh, uh, Brother Hank, I'm going to all my hands out to this next Sunday, but I'm going to be gone because yeah. I'm taking my mom down to Tennessee. Okay. And uh, really going to miss everybody. Yeah. You know, even though I go to church down there somewhere, yeah. it's not the same, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, But my mom's, a, my mom's really looking forward to going down there and getting to see her yeah. grandkids. So, uh, you know, there's some things that you got to do, too, you know. Yeah. So, well, she deserves to get those things. Well, she's 84. She's a year older than you. Yeah. <laughs> and she, can she get around good? She gets around pretty good. She's still yeah. driving. Yeah. Well, that's good. Surgery the 
we're talking a big surgery and she fell and she didn't have any broken bones, mm -hmm. any broken bones. So, but, but keep them in your prayers because this lady, she is a Christian, she's a believer, she's, oh man, when I went in their house, we had church. I mean, it was amazing. She's not able to get out and go to church, but, and of course they can't either because they have to be with her whenever she's at home. She's, she lives with her daughter. But they still worship God and they still have church right there at home. So keep them in your prayers. Because she's a special lady to me. Thank you. How uh, uh, Paul and Gary Gary? Paul and Gary need our prayers too. Yeah. They had a lot going on. I mean, a lot. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Lots of prayers. Lots, that. Of, lots of people with lots of needs. Yeah. All those needs. Right. We just need to be faithful and dedicated to showing our prayers and to give God praise for those answered prayers. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Hey, one well, there. Again, I want to say it's good to be in church with everyone tonight. And the way that the Holy Ghost is moving in this place, the, I don't know, for a long, long time now, I've been feeling like. God is getting ready to really do something in this place. And I can see it taking place now. And anyway, I stand and just remember these requests and the, uh, the blessings and everything. Give God thanks for what he's doing. And all week long, pray and ask God for the ones that you know that need to be prayed for. Uh, Brother Danny, would you dismiss us?